Hey everyone, Tim here. Just uh, wanted to bring a short video today uh, on just like a cool thing that I found. Um, so when you are a developer and you start tinkering around with, you know, your framework of choice, uh, whether you be on the web or somewhere else, uh, you really get an understanding for how things are built and often where some cool little Easter eggs might lie on your favorite website or app that you use frequently. So right now I'm on ChatGPT. This is a popular new tool from OpenAI. Um, it's pretty fun. You know, you just type in like some random question or uh, try to have a conversation with it. Um, it's pretty believable. It's a lot of fun, uh, but I definitely would not rely on this for like, you know, responding to emails to your boss um, or sending investor updates. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't bother with uh, doing something like that. Uh, you should be doing those things personally anyway, but you're probably familiar with, you know, you go to a website, you know, and if you're the curious type, you would go and inspect Element. And, you know, there's really not something too cool here. Um, I'm not gonna expand this, but on any site that uses Next, you'll typically get like this Next data ID. And I've definitely gone to some websites and like loaded it up with like, you know, a session and then just scraped this data so I wouldn't have to hit the API because I needed like my profile info or something. Um, I've definitely done that before. Uh, this is pretty cool, um, but that's not what this video is about. That's not the Easter egg. Um, often if you go to like a website, you know, um, I, I think Reddit had one for a while, OpenAI had one for a while, just from the get go, you know, people love to kind of personalize the HTML and here they have their logo and then a link to their careers page. I've seen some people get created with console prompts. Um, I think actually maybe if we go to Reddit, we might, they might still have theirs up. Let me see. Yeah. So Reddit has uh, want to work at Reddit, you know, they publish this new thing and then you, there's a link to the careers. You can have fun with that as much as you want. Um, but what we're going to talk about is what something I found that I thought was interesting usually because almost all websites now are built on JavaScript frameworks. It's just the way it is. Um, a lot of them also use a service called Next, uh, which does like static site generation, server-side rendering for React. Um, well, it does a lot of stuff. It's a really powerful kind of tool. Um, one thing that Next does though for generating static sites is it publishes this next static folder and you'll get your chunks and your css this is minified code it's unreadable there's nothing you can really do with that um but they do publish this kind of random id folder every time you publish a new build this folder name is going to change but it's always going to be some random series of letters and numbers um there's two files in here a uh, server-side generation manifest which isn't really important and not going to be talking about the differences between SSG and SSR right now. Um, but we're going to talk about the build manifest. So you see, we open it. It almost looks unreadable. We can click this pretty fire thing on Chrome dev tools. And you'll see that we kind of get something that looks pretty familiar. We get a slash for home, a slash chat. That's where we're at and a slash code space or, and also a slash workspace that seems to take in a ID of some sort and no idea how that works either. So apparently they're going to have saved workspaces uh, for chat GPT. That's unannounced. Um, they're also going to have uh, code space. So like if we try to go to slash code space right now, this is what happens. We get hit with a login wall. I'm already logged in. So uh, I don't know if this will even work. Um, let's see if I can even log in. Uh, I think it's behind a paywall now. So let's see. Yeah, it just brings me back to chat. That's not very useful. Uh, lucky for us, I took a screenshot, though, the day that I was able to get to it um, because I thought it was interesting. And you can actually see that we actually have a slash code space and we get this page looks just like chat GPT, but it seems to be specifically targeted towards developers. That's pretty cool. Um, so, yeah, uh, able to find this kind of like alpha feature they haven't talked about. Looks like it's going to be a competitor to uh, GitHub's Copilot or something like that. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, and I found this simply because I'm just a little bit familiar and curious with the, you know, the websites that I interact with. Um, so yeah, the next part of this video is just going to show you exactly how this works from the developer side. So if you were just curious and like how to do it, um, 
just go through the like just inspect element don't look at the html you're probably not going to find anything interesting there go and look at the sources tab and see if there's uh some interesting stuff going on and especially go look at the network tab you might be able to see uh you know what api you're inter interacting with on the front end but what i'm going to show you now is why that happens so this is a REPL of a Next.js app, um, pretty simple, uh, totally basic. Like we have our index HTML page and all I'm going to do is go to the hidden files. And if we go to next static development, we get a build manifest too. And you'll see that there's a homepage, a slash underscore error. And that's pretty much it. Uh, we only have two paths. So. From a developer standpoint, what happens when we add a new page? Does build manifest get updated? And also, like, just because the URL is there, as we saw with OpenAI, does not mean that the page is accessible. But if we were to, for example, add a new page, uh, let's just duplicate. Let's just duplicate this one, I think. Um, and we'll call it docs. And we'll uncomment this. We don't need this. We'll call this docs. Uh, we can get rid of pretty much all of this content because we really don't need it. Um, actually don't need that either. Where did my file go? Hello. Okay, there we go. Um, and we'll just have a link that goes to, uh, goes back home and it'll just be like, uh, go back home. And then we'll close this link tab. And because we're doing a React component, we will have to put this in a fragment. And we'll just say on the docs page. And we'll save that. What in the hell is going on here? Oh, what the heck? I got rid of my... This is why I can never get behind these kind of in-browser editors. They, they always just wind up like trying to be too opinionated and become a complete disaster. Um, and we got to export docs, obviously. Okay, so now there is a page called that should be called slash docs. If we put it in a folder, it would be slash folder name slash page. This can also be a variable. You just put it in brackets like we saw with the workspaces stuff. Um, and obviously, let's you know add a link to our docs page. So we'll go link href, and then we know the URL should be called docs because that's what we called it. What in the hell? Stop that. All right. It's obviously uh, pretty easy to just do this locally. I just didn't want to install uh, a whole new app on this. Oh yeah, and link's not defined. Uncomment that, save it. And let's check what happened to our build manifest. Now this is the raw source code. People wouldn't have access to this. We only have access to it because we are making the site right now. The thing that's going to get published is, you know, the chunks of code that get generated from this and also the build manifest. So if we go to build manifest now, we should have a, an additional page called docs, which it doesn't look like it got compiled yet. Do I need to like redo this? Hello, my page is ready. I mean, if we click on the link, there we go. Now it's done. Uh, if we click on the link, you'll see that slash docs is now published, which means that people are going to know that that URL exists and that that pattern exists. Um, now, of course, that doesn't mean that the page is unauthenticated. If it's, you know, something private, you might not want that. Um, and I believe there is a configuration to hide some URLs from the build manifest if you wanted to. But sometimes, you know, sometimes things will come through, uh, you know, come through and a alpha product could essentially get kind of, uh, you know, hinted at uh, through just the build manifest itself. And so, yeah, uh, just a short little video just showing you like why this happens and just like how it works from a developer standpoint. And yeah, that's all. Uh, so yeah, go tinker around, go inspect element, go check out the sources, go check out the network tab. I think you'll really find some interesting stuff, especially if you're a curious type and you're just starting out in your developer journey. Thank you.